Well, hello. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use addinexpress.net to create an Outlook add-in that contains a couple powerful features, but also just requires a little bit of code. What we're going to do is create a couple of advanced Outlook forms, one that will display within the Outlook Explorer window and will allow us to toggle its display, and then when it's shown, we'll show the mail header of the selected email item that's in the Outlook Explorer. The second form will show the folder path of an item that's open within the Outlook Inspector. So we open up an email down at the bottom of this form, we'll see the folder path and we'll be able to click it and navigate straight to that path. Kind of handy. If you've never used Add-in Express, it fully integrates inside of Visual Studio. I'm running Visual Studio 2012. I'm also running it as administrator, which is a best practice. And what I can do is go to File, New Project. We see in the New Project dialog box, I can go to the Other Project Types under Extensibility, and I see the different Add-in Express templates available to me. I'm going to choose the ADX Com Add-in, and I'll give it a name, in this case, Outlook Demo. Next, we see the new Microsoft Office Com Add-in Wizard that gives us two choices. The first is what programming language do we want to use? I'm going to leave it as Visual Basic. And then the next is the minimum supported Office version. You see here that we support Office 2007 all the way through Office 2013. And this is what we call version neutrality, that we can support all these different versions of Office with one add-in. Here, I want to select Office 2007 so that I can support Office 2007 through 2013. I'll click Say Next. The supported applications, this is the list of everything that Add-in Express supports, but we are only targeting Microsoft Outlook for this demo. We'll say Next, and we'll leave the strong name key to just generate a new one. And with just those few steps, we've already created the shell of our Outlook add-in with the Add-in Express add-in module. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the demo project that's completed, and I'll walk you through all the components and the code without uh, maybe boring you through the details of typing the code myself. So here's the completed Outlook demo add-in. And, and really what we have here in the add-in module are four components. We have the Explorer ribbon. And here below you see the design of it where it, it really just has the tab, the group, and a button. And the same thing for the Inspector ribbon. It has a tab, a group, and a button. And this button, if you look down towards the very bottom, you'll see that it's set, the toggle button property is set to true, and that's the case for both of these buttons. And so we've made them ribbon toggle buttons, and what they'll do is when pressed, they will show the, their corresponding form. We have two forms over here in the Solution Explorer, both the mail header form and the folder path form. And the mail header form comprises really just one text box control, and this text box control will be used to display a selected mail mail items mail header. If we look at the folder path, we'll see that it consists really of just a panel and a link label control, and it'll be used to display that item's folder path. To manage the forms, we have an ADX OL forms manager, and it is it contains two collection items. And I think the best way to do this is to come over here to the properties window and Hit the button to see its members. We have the Explorer collection item. And looking through its properties, we see that we want to use one instance for all folders instead of a new instance for, for all folders. And then for our allowed drop regions, we've used or have specified the top, bottom, right, and left subpanes, along with the docs, top, bottom, right, and left area as well as the top reading pane, and that's the area we're going to specify as the default. And if you're not familiar with drop regions, uh, just look in the developer manual and you'll become familiar with every region that's available within both the Explorer and the Inspector windows. We specify for the Explorer item types, the mail item only, and then for the Explorer layout, as I said before, we're using the top reading pane as the default. We're not worried about the inspector items for this collection item because it's focused on the Explorer window. But if we move down to the miscellaneous area, we want to always show the header. We do not want the close button. And the default region state is hidden instead of normal or minimized. We, we don't want to show it unless the toggle button has been pressed. For the form class name, it's the mail header. 
And then for is drag drop allowed, we've set to true. And if we didn't set this to true, if we left it as false, then everything we set over here in the Explorer allowed drop regions, it doesn't matter because we haven't enabled drop regions. And then we leave everything else as true and, and same for the office theme for backgrounds. Next in the inspector collection item, in this case, we are using a new instance for each folder. We're not worried about the Explorer section, but for the inspector section, Again, we're going to specify mail as our item types that we want to target. We're not worried about any of the others. And then for the inspector layout, we're going to use the bottom sub pane. Then notice up here, we're not using any dropped regions. And down below, we're going to say is drop region or drag and drop allowed, we're setting to false. So what we're saying is the user cannot move this form around inside of Outlook. It's stuck at the bottom of the inspector. The form class is our folder path, and the default state, once again, is set to hidden. The last component is the ADX Outlook events. And what this does is allow us to specify or to utilize all of the Outlook application events. If we look in here in the Explorer window, we'll see you know, the application events, the command bar events, Explorer events, Explorers, form regions, and inspectors, and so on, namespace, all of that. So quick access to all types of events. Let's take a look at the code within this add-in, and I'll start with the ribbon buttons. And the easiest way is potentially just to go down to the View Designer or Visual Designer and go to the Events in Properties and click on the event that I've created, which is the on-click event. I'll just double-click in here, and we'll move over to the Code View. And what we see for the Ribbon Button View Header button is an event that will move through each form instance in the Explorer collection item. And if the button is pressed, we'll show the form by setting its region state to normal. And if the button is not pressed, we'll hide it by setting the region state to hidden. Now, another event we have is the Explorer selection change. And notice that it's prefaced with the ADX Outlook events, which means going back to the designer, if we go to the ADX Outlook events component, go to the Explorer section, and you'll see here the Explorer selection change event, which is the event that occurs when the user changes the folder or selects a different folder inside of Outlook Explorer and displays those items. This can also, we can also force this event with code, but we're not doing that here. So within the Explorer selection change, what we do is we grab the Explorer form by taking the current form from the Explorer collection item and not just any form, it has to be a visible form. So we're looking for the embedded state of visible. And then if the form isn't nothing, so if we have a form, we've successfully referenced a form, we call get mail header. And get mail header is a custom function that I've written that retrieves the mail header from the selected mail item. And so we create our objects that we're going to need to work with, like the Explorer, a selection object, a mail item object, etc. And the first thing we do is we grab the Active Explorer from the Outlook application. We then use that Active Explorer to grab a selection object. And because a selection object contains an items collection, we're only grabbing the first one. We'll just assume we only want to show one mail header at a time. Then we check to make sure that it is indeed a mail item that we're working with. And we split the code. So if we're dealing with Outlook 2007 or above, we can grab a property accessor, use reflection and grab the property, this mappy property, and do what we need to get the mail header. If not, then we need to use the extended mappy functions, which I've included in this code and we're not really gonna cover, but they're there. And we use those to grab the mail header. And at the very end, we return the header text. And this is all the code we need that relates to the Explorer ribbon in the mail header. Well, that's not entirely true because if we move over to the mail header, I do need to show you one other thing. If we do view code. Let's look at the ADX before form show event. And this event is the one that executes right before the form displays. And what we want to check is we, we are going to grab the current instance of the ribbon view header button and we're going to check its state, whether it is pressed or not. And once again, if it's pressed, we'll show the form as a region state normal. If not, we'll go ahead and hide it. Let's go back to our code in the add-in module. 
And if we look at the inspector part, we also have the on-click event for the ribbon button, go to button, which does the exact same thing as the ribbon button view header. And while we're at it, I did notice I have this wrong. Let's just copy and paste it. And so we're gonna loop through the inspector collection item for each form instance and check its states, check the state of the button. And if it's pressed, show the form. If it's not, we'll hide it. And right down here, I've included the extended Mappy routines. They're here for your reference and for you to check out. And, and we'll, we'll include links in the corresponding article that goes with this video, as well as the introduction to this video on our blog. I'm gonna go ahead and save all and close. And what I wanna do now is let's move over here to the folder path. And let's look at this in code view. And we'll just walk through everything once again. First up is this private member of the class, the folder entry ID, it's a string. And what we'll do is we will store the folder entry ID that is the parent of the mail item we're showing within the Outlook inspector. I'll give you a second to review that sentence. So when we open an inspector, contains a mail item, we are going to store that mail item's parent folder entry ID right here. And this will be useful for us when we try to retrieve the folder when, when it's needed. But the first event we have is the ADX before form show works just like it did with the mail header. We check the button, whether it's pressed or not, and we toggle the display of that, of the folder path form. Now here in the folder load event, what we wanna do is grab the current item of the inspector object. And the inspector object is part of the form. We can just get it via say me.inspectorObject and it provides the current item that it's displaying. And what we wanna do, we're not really gonna test if it's mail or not because you know, we are targeting mail only, but here it doesn't matter, all Outlook items have a parent and we can just grab it. There's no need to try to cast it as a certain item. But what we do is we use this object and we grab its parent and we make that the folder object. And if that is not nothing, then we grab that folder's entry ID and store it in the private class member folder entry ID. Then we make a call to get folder path, with it, which is a custom function we'll get to in just a second. And we pass this folder as a parameter and then that get folder path, the returned value, which is a string, we insert as the text value or the text property of the folder path link, which is this link label right here. The get folder path function it returns a string, which represents the folder path of the folder that is passed as a parameter. So taking a look at it, what we do is we're gonna take this folder, and right here we set it to this object child. So what we're gonna do is while child is not nothing, we're going to grab the parent folder of the child. So we're trying to move up the chain, whereas right here in string folder path equals the backslash plus the folder name. We're now gonna try to move up the path and see if there's an, a parent. If there is a parent, great. We're going to continue to build the path. If there's not, then we know we can exit the while loop and return the path of all the folders. Okay, so let's close this and then move over back to the add-in module. And we'll do build, build. Next, we need to register the project. And what this does is registers the system by creating some registry settings in Windows and tells Outlook, hey, this add-in exists, go ahead and run it when you run. Let's do that now. Let's open up Outlook and take this for a spin. When I open Outlook, you'll see that we do have the header options displaying correctly in the Outlook Explorer window. And I can click the view mail header button and it will display our mail header form. I can collapse it and expand it and the button correctly toggles the display. Also too, remember that we enabled the drop regions here. And so we see the various regions that are available for me to drop this form region. I can move it there. I can move it here. But I can't move it in these areas, which are ones where I said this was not available for dropping. And I'll go ahead and put it back in the default area. Now let's open this email. And you'll see that we have my actions displaying. And if I hit the go to item folder, we'll see down below the folder path displays correctly. And again, it works uh, just like the mail header. I can collapse it and I can even use the splitter control. And then 
you notice that I cannot, I'm, I'm clicking, I'm left clicking here, but I can't move this region around. That's because we have not specified any drop regions and we didn't enable drop regions. So let me move the inspector over here and I'll move to tasks in the Outlook Explorer just so that we can demo the click event of the label link control. And boom, just like that, we are moved right back to the parent folder of this mail item. Now I said at the beginning of this video that I would show you how to create a powerful Outlook add-in using Add-in Express. And I think I've achieved that. I also said that it would require a little bit of code. Now, uh, and with all things being relative, I think, I think I achieved that as well. The idea here is that with just a little bit of code, you can write some really powerful features that extend Outlook using Add-in Express.